Hi everyone. So uh, indeed today uh, we're not going. I'm not going to discuss uh, to talk about uh, a Python program or a Python library, but a tool which I have used during my PhD thesis and my postdoc, and and which has uh, really helped me a lot. Um, and as you will see, it's a simple tool, but with a lot of features and uh, it can be a bit intimidating to uh, to start using it. So the goal of this talk is to um, well give you an overview of the tool uh, and uh, some references uh, so that you can learn more about it and and uh, and use it if you need it. So uh, you can, so I will like do a demo of the tool so you can either like just watch or you can do uh, the same thing as I am doing if you want to try by yourself. Um, on the event page on the links website, so if you go on uh, links.fr and then uh, activities, working group, Python workshop, you choose the last one, the first one, and then you have two links. So uh, one link is uh, a list of uh, URLs to public domain books, which I will explain and that we will use. And the second one is the uh, basically all the comments that uh, I will show you uh, today. So as a reference, if you want to to give the exact comment. So um, so if you want to follow along, uh, feel free to to open this to uh, at least you need to download this file, like to put these URLs in a file, which is named books.urls. And of course, uh, feel free to interrupt me if you have any question. So um, to get started, and uh, the um, one thing that uh, I think is very common and, and and uh, is to uh, download a lot of files. So um, in my PhD, I had to download like you know huge data sets from the internet, and, and sometimes it's like thousands of files on the web server. And and the issue is that when you want to download um, when you want to download uh, a lot of files, even even one file, sometimes it will fail, and you will have to retry the download. Uh, because of the problem with the network or whatever. And, uh, well, there's many ways to do this. You can, you know, make your own logic in Bash or in Python or in whatever to, uh, to download files, try again if something fails and so on. But, you know, uh, maybe there's a better way. So, uh, here, uh, there's a website. Which uh, is called Project Gutenberg, which uh, contains a lot of public domains book. Uh, so it's going to be useful for us because they have a web server where you can basically find uh, all the books that they have. And uh, and so I will show you how we can download. So so they have this uh, this tree of this directory tree of books in text format. And uh, we will see how we can download this file, uh, do it in parallel so that it's faster, and uh, also handle uh, download failures and so on. Uh, so if you, uh, so let me, um, uh, sorry. Let me open this one. Um, so if you have these files, it's just URLs with, uh, so here I don't show or I get all the URLs from the web server because this is not the point, but let's say that you have a URL of files that you want to download. So in this case, uh, we want to download 169 files, which are not that big. Um, so one way of doing this, if you are like on the Unix system, is to use the uh, um, so you can download one file using the wget tool. So for instance, you can do this, and it's going to download uh, the file. 
uh, it's going to download the file locally. Okay. Now let's say that you want to download all these files. So you can do. Uh, so if you want to download many files, uh, there's a Unix command, which is I will put bigger, which is called xrg, and that you can specify some. Yes. Okay. That you can specify some value that will be replaced. So you can do something like this, and it says for every input uh, line, pass it to give it to this command and replace uh, the line uh, here. So, so here you can use whatever you want. If you want, you can put what, whichever replacement uh, sequence you want, but it's common to use curly braces. So if I do this, for every line, it's going to download, uh, it's going to execute the command to download the file, okay? Now, uh, this works, but if there's a failure, uh, we won't really know it. And also it's sequential, so it's going to take a lot of time if you have a lot of files. So let me remove all these files. And uh, instead, a better way is to use the parallel command. So the, you can, um, so the parallel tool, uh, basically it's a tool which takes as an input uh, a list of arguments, a list of URLs, of path, or whatever, and uh, which will give it to some command and execute this command in parallel. Uh, I realized when I did this, uh, when I prepared this, that it's only supported natively on Unix system. So for instance, on Linux and Mac OS, not on Windows. Uh, if you're running Windows, you can install it like on, on, the, on the Windows um, subsystem for Linux or uh, I haven't tested, but I found a tool which claims to be uh, to implement the same, at least most of, mostly the same interface, uh, but which works on Windows. So <laughs> I've put the link in the in the in this file. It's the uh, this Rush tool on GitHub. So maybe you can try. Uh, but yeah, natively it's not supported on Windows. Um, but if you're running on, on Linux, you can just do you know apt get install. Uh, Parallel or on macOS, you can like do brew install uh, parallel or, or whatever. Um, so the way you use these tools, you give it a list. So for instance, here a list of URLs, and then a command to execute, and it will replace each line of the input. Uh, replace in this uh, replacement sequence. So if I do this, it's simply going to uh, well, show each line. And you can see that if I do something like this, uh, well, it's simply uh, my command, okay? And uh, we don't really see it, but it does this in parallel. By default, it's going to execute with as much CPU cores as you have. So in this case, case eight. Now uh, let's try to download uh, these files uh, in parallel. So basically we want to do this and I'm just going to add the P option, which says like put these files into the text uh, directory, it's just so that I don't clutter my current, my working directory text file. So if I do this and uh, now it's downloading in parallel, so it's, it's faster, but uh, it's not very nice because we have all these uh, things going on at the same time and we don't really see anything. So let's, use the quiet option of the wget program. So now we won't see anything, okay? But what we can do is use the, we have the ETA for like estimated time of the parallel command. And if we do parallel ETA and run this, now it's saying, okay, um, how many jobs there, there, there are to run or that were run like 169 the average time per jobs, uh, how many are in parallel and so on. You can specify the number of jobs to run with the J or the my dash dash jobs. So if I do just one in parallel, you can see that now it's it's slower, but you can see uh, the progress. And indeed, since it's just downloading file, I can do, do much more than 32. And now it's, uh, it's very fast. Uh, you can also, 
<laughs> get a nice progress bar if you do this. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, wait. It's not progress, it's should be this. Uh, okay, so it should be minus progress, minus. Okay, so if you do dash dash progress dash dash bar, uh, instead of, you know, this, uh, instead of, instead of having the ETA uh, like this, now you get a nice progress. So dash progress, dash dash bar. And now you have this nice progress bar, all your things done with it. So um, this is like the most simple thing that thing that you can do with parallel, but yet it's very nice because you can wrap any comment. So here I'm downloading a file, but uh, afterwards we're going to see how to um, run Python script or other kind of, of programs. But, uh, right now, without doing much, uh, we can you know, download things in parallel and it's nice. Now, uh, let's say that we want to um, that we want to be able to resume and to retry uh, failed jobs. So let's say that I'm downloading uh, just one at a time. And let's do this. Uh, so if I'm doing this, and let's say I stop in the middle. So here I have like 120 jobs left. And if I run it again, it's going to download everything again, right? Because it doesn't know what was already downloaded, what was not. Uh, but the nice thing is that you can do something which is called job log and just give a name to a text file. So let's call it books.log and let me remove the previous one. So you do job log and for instance um, uh, the name you want but here books.log now I can start running stop after some time and now if I look at the content of this file it tells me uh, what has been run so far how many time it took so it can also be nice if you want some statistics if there was an issue like if the exit value of the, the command was zero or something else and the command that was one so once you have this file you can use resume so you have multiple flags you have resume resume fail retry fail so basically resume is going to um, start where it stopped and continue and resume fail is also going to retry uh, command that may be applied. So let's let's use resume fail as I think it's the most common use case. You want to retry everything that failed plus uh, start from where you stop. So if you do this now, uh, so so that let's go to one. Okay, there's 95 jobs left and let's run again. And now we can see that it's it resume where it stopped. And I can do this multiple times. I can stop now. So we have like 70 left. I can start again and it's uh, continue and stop. Uh, so again, very, uh, very convenient. And, uh, and I will give you the reference to the documentation, but basically uh, you have, uh, you can, Choose retry fail. You have basically you have resume, resume fail, or retry fail, depending on, on what you want to do based on the job log. Um, but yeah, you can uh, you can resume job like this. Um, so now this is nice. So let me clean up a bit because now we have people find same name. So let me just run this. One last time. Um, so now we have downloaded all these files, right? Uh, and to show you something else, let's say that we have uh, some, uh, and let me, 
let's say that you have some simple Python script that does something on a file. So here I just open the file and for each line uh, in the file, I split uh, each word basically and I output the word. Uh, so basically it takes a text file and it outputs a list of uh, words of tokens in this file. So let's run this script on some uh, book. So this one and basically just you know, output all of the words in the file. Now, uh, let's say that we want to, to run this. We want to extract all the tokens of all the files. Um, if I do this, it's not going to work. It's only going to, uh, to use the first one because in my Python script, you know, I just opened the first argument that was passed to it. So here, of course, you could in Python implement a loop, loop, look at how many arguments you have and so on, or whatever programming language you have. Uh, but, uh, but with parallel, you don't need to do this. So what you can do is um, what they call the uh, shebang wrap. So this uh, line at the top on Unix system, it's called uh, shebang, shebang, I'm not sure how to say it, but anyway, it says that when you execute this file with the shell, uh, it's going to use this program to run the file. So here you see, I didn't put like Python tokenized the file. I just run the, the script directly. Uh, and so the shell knows that it needs to run this with Python because of this first line here. Uh, but the nice thing is that with parallel, you can just, um, you can just replace this line basically with, uh, so with parallel uh, dash dash shebang wrap and then the, the interpreter path. Uh, here I have some special configuration on my machine. So I have to put this path, but basically on if you have a standard installation, you should be able to do something like this and it's going to work everywhere. So let's do this and now, if I run my script on, uh, I can like even, so let's do this so that you can see. Uh, so we don't see much, but now it happened in parallel. We can check because if we do this, we see that we have uh, 53,000 tokens. And if I just run one, we have 21,000. So here, you know, just by changing one line in my Python script, um, I'm able to run it in, on, in parallel on multiple input files. Um, so again, very convenient and it works, uh, it works on any, um, it works uh, basically any programming language. So you have examples for other language, like Perl, uh, Bash, uh, whatever you want, uh, but basically it's always the same. Uh, the same method that you have to use. Um, so uh, that's nice. Obviously, uh, I could also do something like, uh, so I can list all the file in text by doing something like this or something like this. And I could also do like parallel, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you don't need to put it. So I can, I could also do this, uh, but the nice, uh, the nice thing about, you know, the, the shebang wrap is that you can just reuse, uh, can just execute your script like this and it just works. Uh, so, now uh, that we have this, uh, now that we uh, have this, uh, yes, let's see. Okay. So now let's say that I can extract token from my text files. Let's run it on every text file. So I can do this and let's put this in the files for like token. 
Um, I have some errors because I think some books, they have some special encoding. So some uh, it fails for some, uh, for a bunch of files, but it's, it's, it's okay. It's not on the books. Now, if I look at file, I have uh, 600,000 token. And as you can see, it looks, it looks like this. Uh, now let's say that I want to count the number of unique tokens in this file, because here we have many tokens uh, which are duplicated. Uh, one way to do this on unique systems is first to sort the file and then to use the unique uh, the unique command, which will uh, remove duplicate lines. Uh, and then just count them in the app. So let's say, let's see how much time this takes. Uh, and this will take a bit of time because we have to sort uh, 600,000 lines. Six million, actually. Right, six mm -hmm. million, so even more. Yeah. It should mm -hmm. take like 15 seconds. Um, okay, so it took uh, 17 seconds. Sort and you can see that almost all of the time, it's like 16 seconds was spent sorting, and in just one second, it uh, duplicated. So we can do this, but uh, just to showcase uh, parallel, let's do this. Uh, let's do this in parallel. So um, what we can do with parallel, if you have. Uh, so let's do so you have the pipe uh, the pipe mode of parallel is not good if I do let's say that I do this this is not going to work because this means execute like this command and at the end like basically append the token so this does nothing what we want, we want to pipe the input at the beginning here. Just the same as we had here. We had uh, what we did before. We could also have done the, uh, after this. So we could also this and this. This is the same one. Uh, so we want to pipe. So we can do. Let me clear this. So we can do. This parallel and with pipe mode sort. Uh, and basically, what this does is that by default, it's going to split the input on some record uh, delimiter, which by default is a new line, but you can change this if you want to split on some other field. And it's going to, to group them uh, by default. I think it's, we need to check maybe it's uh, 100 lines or 1,000 lines. I don't know. So it's going to take 100 lines from this file, give it to this, and takes, take the next 100 line and give it to this, and then execute this in parallel. So uh, we can run this, but it's not going to do uh, something really useful because, uh, because now we have sorted like um, buckets of like 100 lines. But uh, then we need to sort again and, and deduplicate again these pockets. Um, so what we can do is uh, now we can basically do this again. So what this does is basically here we do a first uh, deduplication in parallel, mm -hmm. but we still have many duplicates. So uh, this is going to run in parallel. And when this is done, this is going to go into sort again and unique, but hopefully this should be much, fa much faster because here uh, we already have duplicated some tokens. So um, we can see if I do this here. Um, now I have only uh, 800,000 tokens instead of 6 million. So let's just add another sort. Obviously, there are many ways to do this, and it's just to showcase the pipe mode. But and now we can do this, and let's 
and let's time this. Um, and now it should be faster. So now it took only five seconds, and we can see that we find uh, two hundred thousand distinct tokens, which was the same. We can run this again, uh, which was the same as we had here. Um, so basically, the pipe mod is to make if you have a pipeline like this, and one of the commands in the pipeline is slow, you can run this command in the middle in parallel with the pipe uh, with the pipe mod. So we can see it works. We have the same number of distinct tokens, uh, but it's uh, it takes four times. And just out of curiosity, yes. if you add another layer of parallel, uh, you, in, in, there are examples in the documentation where you can uh, pipe the the output of parallel inside in parallel you can do this because it's kind of uh, poker uh, sorting and so 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 you so you can do uh, a merge sort like this but in fact i think with parallel uh, they give a command which is called like parallel sort or something like this which is basically an alias for this okay. which does this parallel inside parallel to uh, to first sort buckets and then merge the sorted buckets uh, I think I have a question. Yes. So uh, before you were indicating the number of jobs, and now it is not. Yes. Uh, so by default, what does it uh, fall to? By default, it's the number of CPU cores. Okay. So, going to so if you run uh, if you run H top uh, on another on another terminal, you can see all the CPUs yes. being used. So let me run this, and now you can see. It's yeah using all the all the CPU cores. So by default it's eight, but if I let's say that I put minus minus jobs or just J2. Uh, so now it now it's lower. Obviously, you know it's uh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's running but uh it's only using two and it takes uh, longer. Uh and and um yes so if your uh, command is like CPU bound, uh, you don't want to put more than you have CPU cores, right? But for instance, for downloading files where you are just uh, IO bound, like just limited by the input output and not by the CPU, you can run like uh, 100 parallel downloads or whatever. You can run much more. Uh, but by default, it's the number of CPU cores. Uh, we have up to uh, to uh, <clears throat> yeah 30. okay 30. so uh, so that's for the pipe mod which is also uh, very nice and again I will give you links at the end uh, actually the links are at the top of this file uh, the workshop that sh file so you have all the links if you go to the documentation uh, you have really a lot go to parallel examples. And basically, you have a lot of examples um, and uh, of how to how to use parallel for doing things like uh, and also calling parallel inside parallel, or, uh, <laughs> whatever you can you want. So um, I'm just giving you basic examples to get a feel of the um, now that's nice, but so far we've only see, seen uh, when we have just one input. So basically we have here uh, URLs or tokens uh, and we give them to some command. But now what if we have multiple inputs? Let's say, um, so to give you an example, we can do, we can do something like this and uh, so I will explain the syntax right after. Uh, so um, basically, this syntax says to parallel run this command with some arguments and take this argument. So it's a special syntax, but that's what they use. Uh, use three times uh, this double dot. I'm not sure how you say in English. Mm, Sorry? Semicolon. 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 Uh, but semicolon is this, no? Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, I never know which one it is. Anyway, it this, <laughs> uh, so if you put three times this, it says basically this is the uh, a list of arguments, and this is the second list of arguments, and you can do as much as you want. And basically, if you do this, uh, it's going to do every uh, every combination. Uh, sorry, yes. Yeah, so I can add three here and I can do it in whatever order I want. I can also do uh, this right. And, and now it's, it's uh, doing all the combination. Uh, so this is very powerful. And um, if you want to use, so what we did before, we did something like this, right? Books.urls by parallel and let's say echo. And this will echo in parallel all the URLs. Now, another syntax that we could have used and that is going to be used now is to use, but with four dots, not three, but four. And here, instead of reading from common line, it's going to read from a file. So I can use this file uh, and it does the same, right? But now I can do something like one, two, three, and echo like uh, two. And now for like every combination of the in, in lines in the input file and uh, of this argument, we, we encode it. So how is that useful? Let's say that uh, we want to compress this text file, but for each file, we want to use a different uh, multiple compression level just to compare how it compresses right there. So we want to compress at level one and level nine. So what we can do, we can do uh, so, I think a good practice when you use parallel before putting your command is, to, is just to play with echo like this to see what what you know what is going what is uh, going to be right. So here, basically, what we want is something like this. So we want to read the so text that path. Sorry, I didn't show this. Something else to know when you use parallel. And especially when you use the job log feature that I've shown at the beginning, is that the order of the input uh, matters. Um, so if you want to resume something, you need to make sure that the input order is the same uh, as it was for the previous run. It depends on the command that you use. Uh, if you if you if you pipe a text file to parallel, obviously it's always always going to be the same order. But here, uh, if I use the find command to list all the text files. I'm not sure that the file command is stable. Uh, I don't know if there's a guarantee that it always output the files in the same order. So either you can like sort it, but you know, it's a bit redundant. So I will just, I'm just going to, to put uh, the output in a text file. So now I always have the same, uh, the same order. So we want to do, this. So we want to read the, the path to the text files from this file, and we want to compress them with le, the gzip level one, which is the minimum, and level nine, which is the maximum. And basically, we want to put this in a file, which is the name of the file dot level the level dot gzip. Here, I'm you. You have um, you have modifiers for the input argument. So if I just do this. Like we've seen previously, it's going to put like dot txt dot level nine dot gz. Let's say that I want to remove the txt for some reason. Let's say I want to do this. If you use the dot here, it's going to to remove the extension from the input argument. So now uh, I don't have it anymore. And you can check. I think in the documentation they explain they explain all the replacement uh, that you can use, uh, which can be useful for different purposes. And I think if you know Perl, which I don't, but if you know Perl, you can even put like Perl expression in this and, and basically uh, do all the replacement that you want. So we want to uh, create these files. So let's uh, use gzip instead. So basically, gzip takes uh, the, the Level is like dash one, dash two, dash three. Dash. So we want dash the level. 
we want to output this to the standard uh, output because we don't want uh, because by default JZIP is to the file name for us and we don't want and we need to specify the input file which in this case is just one and we want to pipe this in this file so let's put quote so it's not necessarily to put uh, yes with parallel you need to put quotes if you have you know uh, redirections like this because otherwise the shell doesn't know if it should be in this command or the parallel command. So this means like it's going to run. Uh, actually, what we can even do, we can do something like this. Uh, yes, sorry, let's remove this. Can I do this? Yes, now we can see which command will be run. So basically, it's going to run this command. So let's run it and remove the echo. Uh, and so it's pretty fast. And now if I look at, so let's compare the time. If we just do this, minus just one. Okay, so it's about like 10 seconds, I guess, with just one, uh, one CPU core. But if now I run it with all my CPU cores, uh, it's much faster. And now if we look at what we have for each file, we have a file we can even just for fun, like compare the size. And so, uh, yes, we can, so it's this. So we can indeed see that there's a size difference. Uh, not the point of this talk, but uh, uh, but just to show that. And, and if you want to, to use even more parameters, we could even, you know, add some, some other GT options here. And, and so if you have what I call this parameters grid, it can be very useful to test a command with multiple uh, parameters and uh, do whatever combination you want. And I know that uh, uh, Fabian, maybe you will find some crazy stuff <laughs> with this. Um, so that's it for all these uh, arguments. And now uh, let me show you uh, one last thing that uh, I think is very nice also. Let's say that now we want to run this on uh, remote machines. So we have a cluster of machines or we have remote machines and we want to do this, but running on remote machines. Uh, as it turns out, it's uh, again, very easy to do with parallel. So all you need to do is a file. Uh, um, so you, you need a file um, with the, um, the SSH command to connect to uh, the machine. Uh, so here I'm just you. I'm sorry. I'm just using uh, two virtual machines which are running locally on my machine. So that's why it's, it's written like local host and I'm using this weird uh, port number, but basically uh, you can use uh, my server, blah, 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 and so on, uh, as long as you have the, the credentials to log into the server. So let me just fix the port number here because it has changed. Okay, so here I have these two machines. Uh, which are virtual machines running locally, but it can be, uh, doesn't need to be. Now let's try to run this, uh, this gzip command. Is this, yes. Let's try to run this gzip command, but what we add here, we add SSH login file and uh, the file which as I've shown, contains just the, the machines. If I do this command like this, as you can maybe get, maybe guess, it will fail because let me run this. Uh, you, you see, we have all these errors like uh, no such file or directory because my files they don't exist on the remote machine. Uh, now you have two two way of solving this. If you have a cluster, usually in a cluster, they have a shared file system where all the machines, they have some folder, which you know is the same on all the machines and they see the same files. So in this case, you won't have this issue. But let's say that you are running on different machines, which doesn't share a file system. 
what you can do is you can use the uh, transfer file uh, argument, which basically say before running the command, transfer uh, the file to the remote machine. So here we want to transfer uh, the file, which is the first argument, which is a line that the path. And we also want to retrieve the output. So the output is the compress file. So we to retrieve file return. So we can do return and just reuse the file name that we have here. And then we can use cleanup, which is going to remove the, the files on the remote machine once it's done. And now I can run this again. And so obviously it's slow first because they are virtual machines and um, and they have, I, I put just one CPU core on each of them. So basically it's running like two jobs at the same time. But it's running inside the, inside the virtual uh, machine. And maybe we can check uh, if I do this. So here you can see I'm inside my virtual machine. And um, wait, I should see maybe it's, or maybe it's too short leave, maybe it doesn't take enough time, so I see. But um, but it's running inside. And uh, very easy, you don't need to install anything on the, on the remote server. Uh, obviously, just the command that you want to run. So here we need to have JZ uh, for the remote server, but it's not everywhere. And now we can run this command. Um, it's very powerful, but again, you need to uh, take into account, for instance, the time to transfer the file to the remote machine and to retrieve it and so on. Uh, so maybe sometimes it's useful to transfer the file in advance, or it depends on what, what if your the time your computation takes and so on. Uh, but that's basically all for SSH. Uh, there are some other options, but basically it's very uh, easy to use. And I think there's an alias if you don't want to put, because it's very common to use transfer file return and cleanup, you can just use, I think, minus TRC, which means transfer the, the argument, return, and cleanup, and, and retrieve this file. But basically, it does the same. Um, so uh, you can do this very easily. And uh, now to finish, I want to show you some other things that you can do, but which I think are less interesting, but uh, let's, let's see them. Um, one thing you may want to do is basically a job queue. You maybe want to have a machine which reads a text file continuously. And each time, each time there's a new line in the text file, it executes this line or it gives it to some program. So here I'm, I'm reusing uh, an example that they give in the documentation, but let's create a file which is called uh, job queue. So I have this file job queue and uh, it is an empty file. Now what I can do is that I can uh, use the tail, so the tail command like this, minus F means follow. So it, it means that it's going to continuously read from the job queue file and give it to parallel. And here I'm using parallel with the uh, SSH command just to showcase, but doesn't need to be. Now, if I run this, uh, it's doing nothing because there's nothing in job queue. But let's, uh, uh, let's uh, write some stuff. So, Let's, I'm going to, uh, so let's do something. This echo one. And let's do it many times. So you can see that now in job queue, you have some commands to run and that as I have written to this file, the commands are executed by parallel. And we can check on which machine they are, on which machine they are running. If we instead use, for instance, the host name command. Uh, the thing is that, you will only see the output uh, when a new line is added. So I need to run it many times. But if I run it many times, you can see that sometimes it's run on one VM and sometimes on the other. Uh, so I never use this, but I can really see cases where it can be really useful. And you can have a script which is writing to this job queue 
or you can even like pipe your mail clients if you want and send the jobs by email or, or whatever you want to do. Um, and it doesn't need to be on SSH, right? You can just run it locally on your machine and it's a simple job manager. And you can combine this with the retail option and everything. And now you have something uh, really nice. Uh, and the last thing I will show you for today. Um, as I said, you can, uh, you need to choose the number of uh, jobs that you want to run in parallel. And instead of, for instance, saying I have eight CPU cores, let's use all my CPU cores, you can use limits based on either the memory, the CPU load, or uh, something else I don't remember. So for instance, you can say, uh, so for limit something here, it's uh, let me find back the command because I don't remember. Um, no, is it this? Okay, so for instance, you can use the uh, load argument and say the max load that you want for your machine. So uh, between zero and one, and it's as new jobs are processed, it will not start a new job if the current load is more than this value. So for instance, you can put 0 0.5 and, uh, um, and it will automatically adapt. I think there's another option to suspend existing jobs uh, if they exceed the load and not to, to prevent new jobs from starting. So you can either pre as many jobs as possible without exceeding uh, your resources. And you can say how many times you want to retry if it uh, exceeds the memory and whatever, you can uh, use all of this. Um, so that's all for uh, today. Uh, as you can see, the documentation is very, very complete. You have a lot of options that I haven't uh, explained, but that's why I wanted to, to do this little demo because as you can see, uh, the basic commands are very simple and it's already very powerful. Uh, so you don't need to be intimidated by this, uh, by this software, but if you want to, to do things more complicated, you can. So the references, the official website is just a uh, GNU uh, parallel. They have um, they have a book that you can download for free uh, here, which I didn't use, but maybe it's a it's a nice explanation. Uh, they have uh, four YouTube videos, uh, which basically show things similar to what I've just shown. And, um, but the most complete reference is this documentation where you have the, the man page. You have examples, which are very nice. Uh, lots of things that they show how to do. And uh, so parse sort is a parallel sort. Uh, basically it's an alias for the, the merge sort that we were discussing before. And you also have a tutorial uh, which shows everything I've shown, plus, yes, a few advanced things like semaphore and, and, and um, reading or writing to an SQL database if you want to. Uh, and what else? Uh, you, you have this rush tool if you want to have something similar on Windows, even though I think the best way on Windows is just to use the volume yeah, the volume SL from uh, Microsoft. And this is the, the, the server where I got the public domain books. And here is all the comments uh, that I just shown to you. So thanks and feel free if you have any questions.
Who shoots first? Are there any questions? On the uh, uh, remark. Uh, sorry, I have a, a remark. So I'd like uh, to thank you, Maxime, because I knew about uh, Parallel SSH, but not about uh, Parallel. So today uh, I learned something and uh, thank you for this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and I'm surprised, Marco, that you, you didn't. Uh, uh, I, I thought about you when I did this, and I said maybe Marco is going to say that with X args, you also have a flag for X arcs to run things in parallel. Uh, and uh, I didn't mention it, but I didn't mention it because- <laughs> Not at all, because uh, as I said, most of the time when I, when I had something to parallelize, I use a parallel SSH and it was yeah. enough, but yeah. uh, parallel is far more uh, powerful. Yeah. And so yeah. that's why uh, I think that the, what, if we have something to keep in mind is uh, if you have to do something very complicated, uh, maybe uh, parallel is the way to go. and. Uh, if you have something simple, parallel SSH might be enough, but it seems to be strictly in included in parallel. Yes, exactly. And, and yeah, I think it's, it's uh, yeah, and it's also, uh, well, I don't even use X args anymore. I just use parallel because it does, uh, does the same uh, and, and, and much more. <laughs>